Hello and welcome back to Favorite Things. Today we're going to be discussing the Hamilton 9965. Field watches are quite a popular style of wristwatch and I've been sucked into the vortex. They are easy to read, tooly, and often have military history tied to them. And maybe I'm influenced by my very first real analog watch, this Wenger Quartz field watch that I got when I graduated high school. As mentioned before, vintage watches have their pitfalls, often making them less desirable as daily wears, and that's what makes reissue watches such an attractive option for watch enthusiasts and collectors. The benchmark for a field watch is arguably the Hamilton Khaki Field, and I'd like to discuss a few of the many reissues. Let's start with a tiny bit of background for context. The original classic Hamilton field watch issued to the U.S. military troops is 33 millimeters, such as the GGW113 and the MIL46374. They had sterile dials and often solid cases with the intention to be disposable, otherwise serviced through the crystal side. They also had fixed spring bars requiring NATO straps, which not everybody likes. Another quirk was the odd 17.5 millimeter lug width. In the 1980s, the Hamilton Watch Company reissued these famous watches in a very similar case, but with a more convenient screw-down case backs and branded dials. This was the birth of the civilian khaki field watch. First, the 9219, which is famous for its various co-branded models, such as the L.L. Bean, Orvis, and Averix versions. It was powered by the ETA 2750 and was then gradually replaced by the 9415, which looks nearly identical except for a few key features. We now have a standard 18 millimeter lug width, drilled lugs, and removable spring bars. The movement was also changed to the newer ETA 2801-2. The case profile was also refined and was the model for the 38 millimeter modern khaki field mechanical that would later be issued around 2017. For whatever reason, the 9415 had a staggering number of small variations throughout the years it was produced by Hamilton. The size of the khaki logo, the design of the seconds hand, the printing of the numbers, the design of the minute markers, the style of the Hamilton logo, the H or lack thereof on the winding crown, and even the color of the dial. Here's a 9415 I picked up recently with an unusual sunburst brown dial that can look black, green, or coppery depending on the angle of the light. Also notice the return of the triangular markers and the small khaki logo of this later edition. Of course, Hamilton is most famously tied to the U.S. military for its issuing of field watches in World War II and Vietnam. For example, the GGW-113. But a lesser known fact is that Hamilton also issued watches for the British military in the 1960s. This is the Hamilton 6BB-75003. It's a manual wound 36 millimeter field watch, complete with bold Arabic numbers, a railroad minute track, and an up-pointed triangle at the 12. These are the British Ministry of Defense's W10 specifications, shared by other watches such as the Smith's W10. The hands have unpainted frames and resemble the sword hands of the old Dirty Dozen watches from 20 years prior. These are seen with either the Fion or Broad Arrow on the dial, or the small initials GS, short for General Service. In 2022, Hamilton partnered with Houdinki and released a special limited version of the khaki field mechanical with a British W10 style dial. It is a very attractive variation to the more common 38mm khaki field mechanical that has countless complimentary reviews on YouTube. This Houdiki version has the same case and movement, but a very different look due to the British dial and the high polished hands. It has loom numbers and like its American brother, a tasteful splash of color thanks to a subtle use of faux patina loom on the hands and dial. The orange painted seconds hand and the older Jet Age Hamilton logo are additional nods to the 6BB. I feel the only thing that is a missed opportunity here is the lack of a Fion or broad arrow at the bottom of the dial. Without the 24 hour markers, I think that space looks a bit too blank. I was surprised to learn that Hamilton had already released an homage to the 6BB 30 years ago with the model 9965. It shares the movement and case with the more common 9415, but with a British style field dial. And look at that super cool arrow at the bottom half of the dial. Also, notice the use of the more familiar modern Hamilton logo script. 
Mine has dead loom on the minute hand, and I'm considering replacing the hands if I ever get around to tracking down a beat up khaki 9415 for parts. You'll notice here that the tritium fades pretty quickly because it only has about a 12 year half life. And of course, no loom on the minute's hand. And side by side, you'll notice the 9965 has a slightly smoother sweep of the seconds hand due to its four hertz movement. According to Hamilton Collector Myron of the Roverhaven watch blog, these 9965s are in fact rare, and they appear to have only been made for one year, 1992. Similar to the 9415, they have screw down case backs for easy service. The case back information is apparently largely for show, and all of them have the arbitrary issue date of January 1992. Mine came on this tired old NATO strap and I replaced it with one of these canvas quick release straps. And that was a brief introduction to the Hamilton 9965, but perhaps the first and only one on YouTube thus far. Please take a second to like this video if you've made it this far. It really helps. Now, to close, let's return to the more modern reissues of the Khaki Field 38mm. Despite countless reviewers criticizing the supposed diminutive size of the Hamilton field watch, for my 17mm or 6 and 3 quarters inch wrist, I find these 38mm watches just a tad too large, not because of the larger 47mm lug to lug, but mostly because of the expansive dial. Dear Hamilton, please release a khaki field mechanical in 36mm, in other words, a reissue of the FAPD 5101. I'm also hoping that the trend of reissuing military watches continues, but in more genuine sizes, like 36 millimeters. More faux patina to make the dial more interesting, please. And also, let's have more manual winders. Some of the watches on my radar are the Smith's PRS-29, the Timor Heritage Field, and the Vertex M100A. Also, I hope that Eddie Platts at Time Factors reissues the Smith's Deluxe GS. And I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for something a little smaller from Benris and Hamilton. Please give me a thumbs up and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.